So Turks and Caicos, set of islands in the Caribbean, that seems like paradise, right? Right now, though, it is a living nightmare for five Americans. The tourists have been taken into custody across the recent months after they were allegedly found with ammunition inside their luggage. One of those Americans, 31-year-old Tyler Wenrick of Virginia, pled guilty today and could face up to 12 years in prison. A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers is back in the United States tonight after pushing government officials there for the release of these Americans. Congressman Josh Burkeen from Oklahoma was a part of that bipartisan delegation who traveled to the Caribbean and joins us live. Congressman, nice to see you again. Thanks for being back with us here on the Thank Hill. You. So, you, the, yeah, so these Americans had ammunition. It was seemingly a mistake. And, and now they're facing potentially years, a decade plus maybe even, uh, behind bars. This was bipartisan. House, Senate, Democrat, Republican. Can you explain what officials there are telling you, and do you think this is going to resolve itself? Good. Yeah, so number one, uh, grateful to Senator Mark Wayne Mullen about two weeks ago. I knew that he was leaning in pretty heavily on this. And just in the, the, the pathway of diplomacy and the predominance of a U.S. Senate position, I reached out to him as a member of Oklahoma's delegation, number one, thanking him. Uh, for leaning in and said, what can we do? What can I do to be an assistant on this? And he said, we're going to take a trip. You, you have any interest? And so that's where this developed. Um, then John Fetterman from Pennsylvania, Democrat. Bob Good, Virginia. Uh, also Michael Cloud from Texas, Guy Rushenthaler, uh, Pennsylvania. And so we went down and had dinner. Uh, we got down. It was a day and a half trip. We had dinner with the family and the State Department hearing their stories. ABC is reporting on Sharita Greer's story. I highly encourage everyone to hear what Sharita Greer uh, is saying. But, uh, you know, with Tyler's case, this isn't someone who could have even found these few number of rounds. Tyler, when he got back on the, the ship that had ported at uh, Grand Turks, what he was able to, to, you know, discover along with everybody else was is that he had two bullets that had, that had somehow found their way through the seams of the sewing stitching and in a previous hunting trip had slipped down inside. Unless Tyler has an x-ray machine at home, he would have never known yeah. this. This young yeah, man I, I, is not of high means. Yeah, no, I, and, and clearly, ahead, I mean, that, that yeah, that, that went through, you know, security screenings that, that didn't catch something like that. You mentioned Tyler. Here was Ryan Watson, uh, who is from your state of Oklahoma, speaking to Chris Cuomo Oklahoma, earlier this month. I'll, yeah, I'll get your reaction on the other side. There are a ton of question marks just hovering around us at this time. You know, the, the most heartbreaking thing about all of this is whenever your children ask, you know, Daddy, when are you coming home? And you can't, you can't give them an answer. So you can see there, they're not in jail. They're essentially kind of like under, under house arrest there. I, I wonder, Congressman, what are the authorities there telling you? And do you think it's safe for Americans to go no. there? I, I looked straight across the table at the premier who would be more or less like the speaker of the house for that nation and the governor sitting next to him uh, and uh, also the attorney general a uh, few oh, two seats away and my comment was this I said almost 15 years ago to date my wife and I celebrated our honeymoon here at Turks and Caicos and my, my conversation based upon what I've heard here in the last 24 hours or less is my advice to my wife is relative to an anniversary return trip is I'm afraid to bring my wife back because I don't know if I could scrutinize my luggage enough if a, if a round accidentally slipped through some, some threading in a bag. And I said, you know, with all due respect, they are a sovereign country. And there is, we were trying to be careful to, you know, not step on their toes. Um, but, you know, we were getting that impression. And so we were trying to be very diplomatic, but at the same time straightforward as they're telling us this is our country. And our response is, my response in that meeting, in addition to my message to my bride about returning based upon fear and how that's going to be public sentiment, and I said, You're, you are a country that 65% of your tourism is coming, I'm sorry, 65% of your GDP is coming from tourism. And of that 65%, 80% right. of your overnight stays are from the United States. In addition to hmm. that, 75% of the investment for hotel realty property villas, etc., is coming from the United States on their islands. Also, 75% right. of all of their imports are from the United States. And so the message are, are to them gonna, was, you are seeing a message action. of fear. I, yeah, I, I got to run, Congressman, but that I'm curious. That was the subtle if, if, implications. Okay.
We're going to, look, if, if, if justice does not prevail here, I will be one of the loudest voices, along with those I think on that trip, saying we should use every economic toolbox, every economic tool in our toolbox to bring about a change. Justice should prevail here. Congressman Josh Rakeen, state of Oklahoma, clearly and I think rightfully uh, fairly passionate about this issue as these five Americans are being held. Congressman, please keep us in the loop on this and we'll talk yes. to you again soon. Thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.